three quick examples of conservative vector field ideas. One is I start with a function, let's say x cosine y. I take its gradient, so automatically this is going to be a conservative vector field. It's going to satisfy all four properties from the, the, other, the previous video. And explicitly it's cosine y i minus x sine y j. So p is cosine y, q is uh, minus x sine y. Let's che check explicitly dp dx, sorry, dp dy, there we go, that is minus sine y, and dq dx is minus sine y. They had better have been equal, they are, okay? Um, I graphed this on the vector field analyzer 2. There's cosine y minus x sine y. And let's go ahead and calculate, oops, let's see. Okay, here's a polygon. I already had one started, I didn't realize. Here's a closed curve. And notice the circulation, that's the integral along the curve, uh, and it applies to a closed curve, the, the term circulation, is zero. And you can see the green and orange are indicating where it's flowing with the counterclockwise motion or against with orange, and they seem to cancel out, and indeed they do. And so that's that process, that feature that the integral around a closed curve is always zero. And we get to circle as well. You can see that the amount of green origins seem to seem to cancel out, and uh, even as I vary the circle, that circ number up and to the right is always zero, 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 zero. Okay. And so that's very special the fact that's a conservative vector field. Um, now let's look at a couple more examples. Okay. What if I had f equals 3x squared i plus, let's say, x cubed y squared j. Is this conservative or not? Well, the first thing you do, you don't try to find a potential function. You don't start taking many, many, many line integrals or closed curve integrals. You check dp dy. That is, oh, 0. Interesting. And dq dx. Oh, that's not zero. That is equal to um, 3x squared y squared. They're not equal, so no, it's not conservative. That's an easy kind of problem. That's a nice kind of result if you're doing a homework. It's like, oh, no. And then they can't really ask you much more because <laughs> it's not one of our special things where all, all of our theorems apply to. OK, um, I think that it. That was supposed to be example two. I think I forgot to change the number. What about another example in the plane? Again, let's say f equals the quantity ln y plus 2xy squared i. I'm getting this from a book. Let me see if I can get it right. Plus 3x squared y squared plus x over y j. Hmm. Okay, let's test it. First, uh, dq dx is the ln y goes away, and I get uh, 2xy squared. And I think I, I think I copied it wrong. Aha. I knew there was something weird. Mm -hmm -hmm. It's 2xy cubed. So you can tell by the fact that I'm actually trying to be careful about this what the answer is going to be. Because if I didn't care whether it's conservative, if it was not conservative, I wouldn't have to be careful about it. OK, so dq dx is um, 2y cubed. There we go. OK. And ah. dq dx, I'll probably re-record this video. Sorry about the confusion. Uh, it's just late. dq dx, there we go. I, for some reason, I was looking at p, and I'm just getting confused. dq dx, here we go. 6xy squared plus 1 over y. There we go. And dp dy, back on track here. dp dy, this is p. This is q. That's 1 over y. Oh, interesting. 
and then plus, oh, 6xy squared. Now, this does not guarantee in itself that it really is conservative. There are some real subtleties there. But at least it gives us the go-ahead to try and find a potential function. So how do you do that? That's the main thing I want to show in this video. We want p equals d of little f dx and q equals d of little f dy. We're just going to attack one at a time and see what happens. So let's do this, p equals df dx. So I want ln y plus 2xy cubed equals df dx. So I'm going to integrate. I'm going to just find the antiderivative in x holding y constant. It's all about partial derivatives here. That's really, really not that bad. So f of xy is going to be um, antiderivative of ln y with respect to x, which is nice. Okay, that's just x ln y, because ln y is a constant here, plus x squared y cubed. And now here's the kicker. Since it's just partial with respect to x, I don't just add a constant here. I can add anything that doesn't depend on x, or in other words, any function only of y. This is the analog of the arbitrary constant. This is what makes this process work. I need this flexibility. So now I just take this more explicit version of f, and I plug it into my next equation. I want q to be df dy. OK, so I want 3x squared y squared plus x over y. I need that to be equal to the derivative of this with respect to y. I know part of that explicitly. I can calculate that out. That's x over y. Hey, they match. Plus 3x squared y, q y squared. Hey, those match as well, plus g prime of y. Now, it doesn't always turn out quite so well, but you're guaranteed to get a certain degree of matching. In particular, you should be able to match, if it's really working out the way it should, with the partial derivatives from the start being equal, you should be able to match it so that this guy, the only thing it has to match is only a function of y. And everything involving x should already be matched. Here, it happens to be that g prime of y equals 0. And so in fact, it's a little bit special that this doesn't even need to be a function at all. It really can just be a constant. So g of y, see if I can squeeze it in, is just going to be a constant. And so our final answer, squeeze it in up here, is that f of xy is x ln y plus x squared y cubed plus a constant. In general, this could have worked out that we might have had to do an additional integration in y. It's not uncommon at all. But this isn't too uncommon either, for this, at least for both problems. OK, so it's this process of just do one of the integrals, put in this as your arbitrary, quote, constant, unquote, and then go ahead and plug that back in to your other equation for the other partial derivative and see what you get. And you're going to get another differential equation, another antiderivative calculation, which usually isn't too bad.